this is a question that has come up, uh, and the question is uh, has to do with whether or not uh, the sports gambling bill uh, will will that see any action. Senator Kiffmeyer, let's go to you first. Uh, anything happening on that? Um, your projection, if any. <laughs> oh my! What an interesting subject. I am not a supporter of expanding gambling, and especially not uh, sports gambling. Um, I shared in a uh, finance committee today where I voted against it, though it did pass, that the um, uh, Bill Bradley, uh, Basketball Hall of Famer, absolutely opposed to it. The harm it does, and especially to the kids, uh, it creates a culture um, of a focus that is more on the bets and the the things that are going to come there instead of the the skills and the quality and the team members and so on. It just totally changes the whole focus of the game, the advertising of it. Um, and then also a law professor as well was speaking against it as well. Just culturally extremely negative and especially for the kids. And so for me, you know, I, I just cannot support something that comes with that kind of impact uh, to our children. I just do not see it. I know the adults enjoy it. But it's one thing with gambling, when you go into a bar or you go into the Legion, you go in some of those places and you do some of those, you go into this place and you do this, um, you have even the casinos are out there. But the big thing that really affects the kids so much is it brings it right into the home, right on their smartphones. As we all know, kids today so much are on their phones anyway. And the thought that the age is 21 and you're gonna somehow keep this away from them and then the other problem gambling, they're going to put some money in problem gambling, which is why would you do something that, that already has an unknown problem? So it's, it's really an issue for me that it passed out a committee. It's passed in the um, House already. In the House, it is 100 uh, percent tribes. Um, and I think that to me is a real problem. Um, we have a in perpetuity, in perpetuity, perpetuity. Uh, language already that was negotiated by Governor Carlson in the past uh, that has really been not good uh, for everybody else in Minnesota. And so uh, there are just a whole variety of concerns that have come up in regards to this. But the most important thing is the harm that um, is there for the kids. And by the way, Australia did this. Britain did it. They have a longer term run at it. Uh, very not good things. It starts out not so bad, and then it becomes very, all sports becomes tainted with the gambling uh, perspective. Senator Osmick, your thoughts on the uh, sports gambling uh, uh, bill? Uh, I don't necessarily have a problem with it. Uh, this is one where Republicans can disagree. Uh, you know, we already talked about cannabis, uh, the sports gambling, uh, you know, this is one where I, I think that it's already, the cat's already left the bag. Um, I think, however, I do think that it should not be exclusive to just the tribal community, that it, if it's going to be allowed, it should be allowed for more than just that particular segment. Uh, and just because we're on all the sins, uh, I'll say that uh, we're hoping to get the growler cap lifted on growlers and small can sizes for our microbreweries. So we got all the sins covered. <laughs> so, uh, so what do you, do, you, do you think all of the, do you think the gambling bill and the growler bill, do you think they both pass? Uh, I think we have, uh, Senator Dames has been working with the, uh, with the House. I think we have come to a conclusion on growlers and small can sizes. Really, those are two things that meet uh, two different needs. So we have a large producers that need the growler cap lifted. And the growler cap, really, what that is, is it stops uh, growlers from being sold after you have a certain amount of, of beer that you brew and sell. Um, I, growlers for Surly, for you know, not to give them free advertisement, for, for, but for a large organization, growlers are a novelty item. But for our small independent breweries, the small mom and pops that might be in Hutchinson or, or up in Brainerd that I go to, uh, they need the small can sizes because it provides a better product that's more stable and it's easier for them to sell. And I think we found an accommodation. So uh, I guess I'll go along with uh, most of the sins. However, I'm not, the, I'm not a cannabis fan. I'll go with the rest of the sins today. I'd also add to that that on the... 
It's okay. Go, yeah, so, uh, Senator Kiffmeyer, I should give you a shot. I shouldn't say shot. We should give you an opportunity <laughs> about the beer and the growlers. And it's it, We're not talking about whiskey or anything. What do you think? No, I'm just going to add to what Senator Osbeck um, said in regards to, uh, I think they also have lifted the barrels, the number of barrels that you can do from 40,000 to 150,000. So like I have a brewery in my area, uh, and I will advertise for Lupulin since the big one got in there. And um, for them, they're they're close to that cap. And so this is a really big thing for them. And, and Senator Housley has been a big part of working with this as well. All the big stakeholders or little stakeholders, as they may be called. The, there's something in it for just about everybody this time. Senator Carlson, uh, we're, we're talking about, as uh, Senator Osmick said, uh, all of the three sins, uh, the uh, cannabis, uh, growlers and liquor reform, um, and then the sports gambling bill and what the prospects are for all of, uh, all of those uh, activities in this uh, legislative session. Floor is yours. Well, I, I think, you know, can you hear me okay? That was one of the problems. You're I great, you're coming through great. Initiate. Okay, good. Um, I'm really not in favor of the expansion of gambling. Uh, one of the things that uh, in our, our uh, interaction between our, the people on our side of the aisle, they're saying that this is a massive expansion of gambling. And one of the things that I think we, you know, I've gotten sensitive to all of the issues that cities and uh, uh, you know, state uh, auditor Rebecca Otto taught me about that, that a lot of the audits that she was doing of cities is embezzlement where people have gotten into gambling so much and they have been, uh, you know, they needed treatment for gambling. And that's a, that's a problem that uh, I was sensitive to because I had a brother-in-law that had the same thing and he passed away and there was a lot of pressure for his wife to, uh, to make good on his gambling debts, which, you know, this legalized, uh, legalized gambling is not going to be the same as that, except that a lot of people just can't help themselves. So it's a it's a very uh, habit forming issue. And, you know, the expansion of it, you know, there's a there's an issue that I just heard about today, and that is where the the benefits come from that gambling. And it's uh, turned over to the uh, uh, the charitable not charities, but charitable gambling funds. And there's there's a lot of, uh, I say a lot of tears in that that whole uh, issue. And so I, I guess I'd, I'd want to understand it a little bit better. I don't think we had it really heard very carefully. Uh, and it should, I, you know, I, I think Senator Kiffmeyer uh, was looking at it as well to come through her committee and it should come through uh, the uh, criminal justice committee as well. So I'm, I think that uh, I can be convinced, but I don't think I am convinced as yet. On growlers, I have had a complete turnaround there. And that is that, you know, when we were looking at uh, Sunday alcohol, I was opposed to it. And the reason I was opposed to it was every one of the liquor stores in my district said they did not like it. They wanted me to vote against it. And so I did several times. But I told them it's coming. It's coming. So you're gonna have to you're gonna have to figure out a way to, to uh, live with it. And one by one, I think they did either that or some of them went out of business, in fact. But uh, the MGM that's that I uh, that the nice closest to me, uh, the owner there said, "Yeah, go ahead, Jim. We'll we'll make good on it. We'll figure it out." So that's what tra changed me. But now we're looking at other alcohol issues, and I'm looking at you know the the freedom for us to do business in any way we want. And I tend to think that I I don't really want to let prohibition rules uh, dictate what we do with alcohol these days. So. As far as uh, the limitations, I I think we can uh, we can scratch a lot of those and we can let people compete. My MGM uh, owner has told me about that. He he showed me all of the beers that he is now stocking, and he told me about the beers that he can't stock. And uh, I think that he should be able to stock anything that has that is, can be on sale. And you know we did have another bill that came through that was restricting the ability for uh, 
the uh, distributors to, or I shouldn't say ability. It was something that, that mandated distributors selling uh, any uh, spirit products to all comers the same way. And uh, I had a lot of the restaurants in my area that were strongly opposed to having that, having that grip on, uh, on you know, uh, private labels or just not being able to buy the products that others would, could buy. So I'm, and I'm open on, let's, let's make sure that the playing field is level and let's go ahead and, and allow alcohol to be sold the way, uh, the way it is in Wisconsin, the way it is in many other states. They don't have these kinds of restrictions. And in fact, I think uh, the next thing that we'll probably work on is some of the fees that we charge the distilleries and the breweries, because I know that breweries can brew in Minnesota and ship their product to Wisconsin and have it canned over there and then bring it back. And that's that's something we shouldn't have to force uh, these uh, craft breweries to, to have to do. Um, and now, what was the third one? Did, did we so, and then that? the last question was, what, what do you think the prospects are for any cannabis legislation in this legislative session? In this legislation, I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, I have supported uh, decriminalization uh, for a long time. I've supported medicinal use for a long time. I stood with a long, long ago with Senator Steve Murphy from uh, Red Wing when his father was very ill and his father was getting some, let's say, uh, maybe a supply from somewhere and was keeping his cancer pain at bay. I have another friend who told me, and he's, he's alive today, he said he wouldn't be alive unless he had cannabis so that it would suppress his gag reflex so he could eat. He had a throat cancer. And you know what we're seeing is a lot of medicinal benefits. And, uh, and I don't think that uh, it's any different than, you know, um, some of the, the products that are coming out of, uh, um, out of opiates. So I, but I you think don't, you don't the think that the, more, uh, the legalization of cannabis uh, is, is going to pass in this session? In this session, no, I don't think so. No, I, I think, you know, I guess we'd probably have to ask the uh, uh, the other side on the program here because uh, I think there's a pretty good uh, majority of the Democrats that would vote for it, but we have some problems with uh, having a, a passing number. So no, I don't think it's going to pass. And by the way, I want to say that there's three things that I'd like to see, and that is the ability to test and show what the limits are for driving, the ability for employers to prohibit it from, like uh, trucking companies, prohibit it completely from being used or being in your system when you're driving a truck, and then uh, figure out uh, you know, our, our way of uh, marketing it so that it's not available to kids. So those three things are pretty important to me. <laughs>